Hey guys, this is Dapson Ishmael. Wizzy will go and build a version 16 is finally here and as we saw in a previous video, it has a lot of new features, additions and so many more. So in today's video, we are going to have our first impression on Wizzy will go and build a version 16 and see some of the additions and um, you know, new features that has been added. So without talking further, let me just go ahead and then launch it. So once I hit on um, launching you realize on the splash screen this time around we have um, some kind of progress um, bar over here which shows as what is actually loading so at this point we have our font as well as icon libraries um, loading and then also extensions will come in and then once everything is downloaded it is going to go ahead to launch the application so let's just wait for a few seconds as it loads and uh, um, open the application for us to take a look so it's currently downloading and as you can see we have the interface of the application now the first thing i'd want you to know is that once you are installing the version 16 on your system and you happen to have a previous version being it uh, version 14 15 whichever one you have now you have the chance of being able to import settings from your previous um, version so i've actually done that uh, before activating the application so that is already done that's how come I have a couple of things already you know set up in here so um the first thing we take a look at is the interface so almost similar to that of version 15 um not really so much changes over here but let's just go through the options or items available in the ribbon so on the home part we have almost everything here which uh, was actually available in the previous version that was 15. Now the only thing I see as new here is the motion effect which has been added here. As you can see it is actually disabled and I believe once we bring a tool in here it is actually going to be enabled for you to be able to um, work with. And then when we go to the insert section almost um, the tools available in here were all available um, in the previous version. Let's just go ahead and head to the page and this time around um, I think everything here was also available in the previous version. So let's continue to view and uh, let me see if I can actually find something new in here. So almost everything we've seen here was also available in the previous one. The same for arrange and uh, let me head to tools and uh, everything over here was also the same. Now what I'm going to do next is actually head to the tools. Um, that is the options section. Let's go ahead and head to the options section and then take a look at some of the additions that was um, added in here. So under the general tab i think everything here was actually available in the previous version um let me just go ahead to html and over here we see um cash buster which actually allows you to you know um minimize the size of um should i say css files as well as js files which you actually include or your page um, generates once you're working on a website project so that's some of the additions that has been added over here and then on the font we have everything here which was actually available in the previous version so let's go to files and folders and um, this was also similar to what we had in previous version and under publish you also have um, everything here which was actually available in the previous one let's head to user interface now there's actually some additions that allows you to be able to tweak your um, layout or user interface uh, that is going to be close to Microsoft Office 2019 so yeah you can actually go ahead to specify how you want that to look and then you go ahead with that then you have grid and guides which um, I think everything here was actually available in the previous version let's continue to extension now you can automatically download missing extensions that is if you are opening project as well as you can enable live HTML rendering of extensions that is you can actually see how um, those extensions work especially if it is um, it has to work with the internet or it needs an internet to probably function so these are some of the additions that has been added and then under backup now you can create a backup which is going to be in a zip format as well as you can also include a password as part of your backup so that's one um, cool option in there so let's just go ahead and then um, close from here and then take a look at the other aspect of the interface so the toolbox actually looks the same um, there might be some few added added tools in here which we'll take a look at shortly as well as the blocks also looks the same which also has some few added um, blocks here and then under the site manager um, we don't really see anything um, new here now under the properties realize that this section has been redesigned a bit so this happens to be the page property so all the options available in here is actually available at the page properties so this is actually um, the 
interface uh, so the canvas actually looks the same nothing really new here you can actually go ahead to create your grid as you would have done with our previous version so i think i'm true with the interface let me just go ahead and take a look at some of the tools that has been improved or the added tools in the application now the first on the list happens to be stock photo so let me just um, locate that so stock photo at first you had a chance to use or work with that is on splash photos now the good thing is version 16 allows you to also work with pixel base so if you've ever used image for images from pixel Bay before you realize that there's a wide uh, collection of images you can actually um, select from so now it's actually incorporated with the application now the good thing is or you have to know that you actually need the internet access to be able to use either pixel Bay on splash and you can also search for um, images within specific sizes and so on so that's just about it with the stock photo section now the next thing i'll be talking about is morphing shape so let me see if i can actually locate that so there's morphing shape which has some um, newly added um, options as part of that so that can even help you in creating some sort of animation so let me see where i can um, locate that so this is the shape to trying to figure out where the morphing shape is going to be let me um, search here once more so i can't seem to find that let me just come to this section and then see if it's actually missing here because of the number of um tools i have available in there so let me search for morphing do i see any morphing okay so we have morphing shape here let me just go ahead and then add it to my um tools here so let me just add that to the standard set of tools or so that should be your other images let me just keep it under images probably drawings is fine so let me just keep it under drawing now morphing shape is going to have some sort of shapes so let me just open this so as you can see we have different kind of shapes over here which we can select from as well as you have a couple of collections over here so if i select the blob i can actually select choose from any of them and then the good thing is you can also add animations to them so they have you know this sort of um, moving effect as we saw in the um, teaser for version 16 so i'm actually going to be creating tutorials on how to go about these two so that is just about it for the morphing um, shape and the next thing is um, the cms set of tools so there was a couple of additions that was added to them let me just scroll to the section um let me just come to cms set of tools i think that should be somewhere down here and uh, take a look at some of the options available with them so this is the cms set of tools i think um, one of the tools that i came by was the cms card i don't seem to see that here so let me just try to customize and see if that is actually a two on its own and um, see how best so okay so we actually have that those ones here so we have cms admin cms card label uh, menu search and view so let me just add the cms um, card to the cms set of two so the reason why i'm actually having um, i will have to be adding these tools to their respective section is because i imported some of the settings from my previous version so that's how come i'll have to be doing this but aside that that's totally or that should be fine with yours once you have it installed newly so let me come to the cms set of tools and we have cms admin we have label menu now the cms card is one of the tools i'm interested in which allows you to be able to specify different aspects of the cms tools to be able to capture content in the cms card so that's one cool tool in there that you can actually incorporate or use as part of your project as well as there's a couple of additions added to the um the cms set of tools so you can now have cms editable content which allows you to edit um, pages within your project without you necessarily having had to create an uh, mysql database so you can actually use a flat file database for that so let me see if it's actually a tool on its own if not let me see how best i can um, come by it so let me go to the cms set of tools again and see if i could find any editable cms editable content um so editable content is yeah, i should i think it should be this uh let me just move this under standard and then editable content admin so yeah that is basically um those tools are looking for so let me 
come here and um, bring them to the canvas. So we have the CMS. Uh, so this is the editable content and this is the editable content area, which you can actually go ahead to make changes to um, the editable content. So that's, those are some of the tools that, you know, was part of the teaser, which I find to be very cool that you can actually use um, for a couple of things. So let's move on to the next part, which is social login. So if you are using the login set of tools, you have the chance of now using the social login to be able to log in into your, um, should I say your, um, your website or maybe whatever, whichever aspects that you want to be people to log into. So let me see if I can find that here. So I think that is likely to also be a tool on it tool. Let me find out um, that from my toolbox and see if I have social login as a tool on its own. So let me just go through the set of tools over here. And um, I don't think, okay, so we have that over here. So that's also going to be under the login set of tools. Let me just come to the login set of tools and then move that in there. So that should be coming here. Click on OK. And then let me just go ahead and search for that also. And then I can bring that in here. So now you have the chance to, you know, log in into your account using social media profile. So this is the social media login tool that can actually help you to do that. So you have to um, configure this with your um, you know, details over here. So I'll actually be making tutorials on how to go about these and subsequent videos. So let me just go ahead and then continue with the rest of the tools that I have available. So the next thing is web um, images or web images, WEBP images, which allows you to use a um, smaller version of images for your project. So um, I think that should be, let me just come here and see if I have the option to select that. Um, let me just come to tools and see how best to go about the web images. So that should be under um, publish. Let's see the options that we have available over here. Um, I don't think I seem to find that over here. So, okay, so we have um, file compression. You can actually compress PNG files as well as com um, JPEG files, but I don't seem to see the web images over here. Let me see. I don't think this is going to be a tool on its own, but let me just go ahead and then search for that and see if I'll come by one. So this is not a tool, this is actually a feature that's part of two. So that's just about it with this um, web images. I'll figure out how that is um, going to work and then I'll make tutorials on that as well. And then we also have um, gradient styles, which has been added to um, elements. So let me just go ahead and then maybe bring the shape to over here. So there's been a lot of gradient which has been added. So we have the gradient style, which has a lot more gradients added and then you can also go ahead to configure how you want that to work as well as you can also swap the colors and um, this was actually available in the previous version but you have a lot more gradients added to the um, gradient or the tools that happens to be able to work with the gradients and then also you have the chance to rotate object so um, now once i bring this shape to over here realize that there's rotate over here which i can actually use to rotate the um, shape here to different um, angles depending on how I want it. So I can actually flip this also and uh, I can go ahead to rotate it to respective, um, you know, angles. And if I want to do this manually, I can actually go ahead to, you know, rotate it. So this is not just for this tool. It also happens to be for a couple more tools available here. Now the sad part is this tool doesn't work with the layer tool or the layout grid tool. So you just haven't uh, happen to have this working with a couple of tools that is available and Wizard Web Builder. So that's with regard to the rotate aspect. And then you also have the line tool, which has a couple more of um, lines, um, should I say options or icons added or designs added to it, which allows you to select different um, kind of lines you'd want to use over here. So that's with regard to the line tool over here. And um, yeah, so that's just about it with the line tool. So let me go ahead and take a look at the next item, which is the shape divider, which has already been available in our previous version. So let me just go ahead and bring the layer to. So once I bring the layer to over here and I come to the divider section, realize that you have a couple of shapes that you can select from now. There's um, a preview over here, which gives you an overview of whatever you are doing. So after you have an idea before you actually come or you conclude or click on OK for your final 
uh, project. So that's with regard to the dividers here. Now the next thing I'll be talking about is the photo gallery set of um, tools or options, which has a couple of additions to it. So photo gallery now allows you to be able to filter or add filters to your, uh, let me just clear this. Yeah, I want photo gallery instead. So you can now add um, filters to be able to specify uh, respective images or categorize images under um, specific you know section and then also um, you have the star option which has been available but you can actually go ahead to you know specify how you want that to look and then also you have the unite gallery option which allows you to display how you want your photo gallery to look so this is just an overview so i'll be going into um, deep into this on how to go about this but as you look at the right hand section you realize that there's a filter there's rotate and a couple more options which are available in here so those are some of the options that are available with the photo gallery tool now the next one is going to be the slideshow which now has the option to use um, that is ken bent let me just go ahead and search for the slideshow draw on the canvas in here let me just go ahead and then select an image and then once i double click on it over here i have the options or the settings available in here to go ahead to configure it so as part of the slideshow now you're able to use ken Benz, which is a lightweight um, version of that um, reduces the file sizes of your images so that actually doesn't require a lot of resources to load so that's with, with the slideshow that's one of the additions we have with the slideshow now let me just come in in here and then search for an image too that's the next thing i'm talking about which has um, i think a watermark option let me see if i can come by it all right so the watermark option this time around allows you to be able to specify padding around the text initially it was just the text which is just going to be hitting the edges of your um your image but this time around you can actually have padding around the image which is actually a good thing so you can specify the type of watermark you want to have and then you can go ahead to specify the details about the watermark you can actually specify the font type and then a lot more um, options available in here so there's also some improvements made to the form 2 which has to do with the checkbox let me just see if i can come to the form 2 over here and um, let me just instead of using this let me just use a wizard instead and go ahead and then creates a form out of the template which are available in here so you have the option to use um, i think there's the checkboxes are already available uh, with previous version but this time around there's some improvements with checkboxes here which you can actually go ahead to you know um, add or maybe implement a couple of things using the checkboxes so i'm not going to go deep into that also now let me just go ahead and then move on to a different tool which is going to be the accordion tool so let me just clear this and search for accordion so there's actually image accordion let me see how that works and um okay so that's uh, i think still under the slideshow let me just um, get rid of this and then come to the accordion to itself so this is accordion to and uh now it's uh, much more you know um, it has a very cool design now and then also as part of the features that is, has been added to the accordion is the ability to reposition icons based on how you want to go about that and then you also have a redesign over here on how you can actually go about customizing the accordion too so i'll be making tutorials as i keep saying on how to go about some of these new um, you know features as well as additions and then the next one is going to be tabs let me just go ahead and then search for tabs click on that and then also as part of that now you can also include or use steps or you can set your tab mode to be steps so once you come to let me just go ahead and then um come to the style and uh let me see the options available in here so let me just come to the options section you can um, go ahead to customize the tab including or having in mind that you can actually set um, steps as part of that and then also it has actually been redesigned using bootstrap 4 and then now you can also um, use events to control how your tabs work so this that's probably you can use uh, let's say you can bring in an anchor um, object over here create an event and use it to control how you want your tabs to work or you can actually even do this with other objects so that's where the tabs over here you can also um, change your tab into a form that is if you want to do that now let me come back and search for the next two which is going to be the card two now the card two as we saw 
earlier um, has the option to be able to use with TMS set of tools as part of that. Now the card tool also has a couple more um, features added to it. So this time around, you can actually specify um, um, the popover can be controlled using event or triggers over here based on how you want that to happen. As well as the card this time around also um, has um, or the popover is using bootstrap to um, have the design you know probably done so that's with the card too and then you also have the max width here which you can specify especially when you're using this with layouts grid so that's um those are some of the additions added to the card too now the next one is going to be the card container which also has some few additions to it now one of the additions is you being able to change the mode from uh normal yeah, that's card deck here to masonry over here you can actually um, specify using carousel as well as card columns now these were available in previous version the new or the added feature over here is masonry so let me just go ahead and then, um, close this and then move on to the next two which is going to be the flex container which now has the option to add um, box shadows so let me just go ahead and then bring this in here and then once i double click on it to realize there's box shadow over here we can which you can actually use to create a shadow around your flex container now the next item is going to be flex box the um, or flex grid over here which allows you to you know change the order just as we saw in the proof um, that's a teaser uh, you can actually change the order that is when you switch to different breakpoints being it uh, mobile tablet whichever um, mode you switch to you can actually change the arrangement of the layout so let me just continue um, with the next two which is going to be the layout grid now for the layout grid um, one of the features that has been added has to do with positioning of element so now when you come to the um, should i say you can actually create tough columns which has been available in previous version but as part of that also you have the chance to specify the um, vertical height um, order so options available in here initially it was just about three options now you have a lot um, more available which you can actually use to go about that and then also as part of that you can also specify the order in which you want objects or elements to be arranged especially when you are using the layout grid in um, responsive mode or um, having them with um, responsive um, that, that is mobile devices and so on the next object is going to be the panel um, menu which now allows you to be able to have an icon which is going to serve as a trigger for your um, panel menu so you can actually create an icon over here specify the image you want to use and then there's an animation that can actually also be added to that so then um, you can actually go about specifying more options that is has to do with the style or the design of your panel menu over here and then as part of that also we also have layers that is a layer that is if you are setting a layer to a panel um, layer you can actually also specify the position being a static or fixed so let me just go ahead and then select panel layer and we have the option to let me see where you can actually change that to static or fixed um so let me just go through this so um okay so that's what we have over here with the position we can actually specify static or fixed so that's with the panel menu as well as the panel layer the next item is going to be the layer itself which has um, under the floating um, option you actually have the vertical height also options available over right here which you can actually you know specify how you want that to um, be just like you would have done with the layout grid so you have those options also available in here now for events there's been some improvement um, added to that as well as a couple more events that you can actually create um, this is only available when you're using tools which has events as part of them and then also there's um, transitions which are also um, has some additions um, with the kind of transitions you want to add so there's a couple more transitions added as well as um, with um, css animations also there's some few more animations which are also added that you can actually go ahead to use or incorporate as part of your project now the next two i'll be talking about is the block two which now also allows you to specify a border as well as a, a background image so once you bring the block two in here under style you can specify a border around the block two as well as you can specify a background color that you want to use or even change the background um, mode over here now the next two 
I'll be talking about as the um, HTML5 audio and video too. So let me just get them from here. HTML5. Now with the video option, you have the chance to use the apply um, um, extension or player to display how you want your you know HTML in it audio video to look like. So you can actually use the apply extension for that. And then the same goes for the HTML5 audio as well, which also has the option to use the apply ex um, extension or player over here to display your um, HTML5 media content. As well as with YouTube also, you have the chance to also use the apply um, player to um, display how you want your video, that's YouTube videos also to be shown in your project. Now, rollover images has um, this time around. Let me just get to the rollover image over here. So the rollover images this time around allows you to also specify a border around your um, your rollover image as well as when you come to animations also. There are a couple of animations you can actually use for this. And then also when you come to, I think uh, under general, you can actually set um, trigger for your rollover image, being it either click or hover. And then you actually have your rollover um, effect, you know, um, applied. So that's with regards to the rollover um, image. Now, the next thing I'll be talking about is the teamable button, which also had some, uh, let me just get to the teamable, which also has some few, you know, additions added to it. So. This time around, you can actually align text to whichever way you want to um, have been it to the left as well as to the right. You can also create border around your um, your teamable um, menu as well as you can also have either enable or disable on how you want that to work. So that should be um, should be available somewhere in here as well as you can also use icons and specify the kind of icons you want to use. Now, my next set of tools I'll be talking about is the login set of tools. We've actually spoken about you being able to use the um, social media login for that. Uh, as part of that also, you have the chance to specify the kind of um, security you want to use for your login set of tools. So there's the hardship or the hashing algorithm which you can use, which has a lot more you know, security. And uh, so that's over here. You can actually specify being it MD5 or Equipped, and then as part of the login set of tools, also you also have the logout um, button, which now allows you to also specify or include an icon as part of that. And then also as part of the login set of tools, users now can have the chance to be able to delete their account if they want to do that. And then also with a sign up, you also can include a mat um, that is going to um, be solved before a user um, has a chance to sign up to your um, project so you can also do that and it also it also has um, a password strength which is also included as part of your sign up set of um, or the login set of tools now the next two i'll be talking about is the pagination which this time around has the chance to be able to have um, a circular radius um, so let me just go to the pagination so let me search for pagination and um, you can actually create a circular radius under the style set or where you have radius over here you can specify the um, this up to i think about 500 and then you have a complete circle in here so you can actually see that implemented so that's with the pagination there's nothing really more uh, added to that as part aside that now the next thing is going to be the carousel which now has about 40 uh, more um should i say effects which has been added to it so let me just bring that in here i actually like how the redesign of the carousel to especially with the arrows that you have in here once you bring it to um the canvas so once you come into the animation section there are a couple of animations available in here and then once you come into the easing part you also have a couple of you know options which are available in here now another style you also can specify um a few more options that you would want to work especially when using the carousel object so that's with regard to the carousel let me just um, go ahead and then continue with the next two which is going to be the table two um, which now you can specify direction of content so let me just locate the table in here so once i bring it in here you specify the rules and once you are done you can also specify i think you should be able to specify um, direction let me just go ahead and then go to the properties of this 
and um, press the property to let me see how best I can locate this. So this is the cell property. You can actually have uh, so under cell property you have alignment. I think uh, let me see if I can find the overall table property and see. So we have cell properties and cell height. So um, let me see if I can come by the direction which has been added to the table um, property. So this is the table property actually. That's what I was looking for. Let me see if I can find the direction um, and then general. So yeah, so that's the direction over here. We have both from either left to right as well as from right to left. So that's with the table two. And then the next option is going to be the dialogue two. So let me find the dialogue um, two in here. Now for the dialogue two, you realize that um, the look looks a bit different from what we have previously. So initially it was using jQuery. This time around it uses um, that is um, bootstrap as well as you can there are a couple more options available in here where um okay so you actually still have the option between either jquery ui as well as bootstrap which is cool and you can also um have a border radius in here so under style there's border radius which is included as part of the style options and then you can also have this to be full width and um, you can also have a full height and then you have animations that you can actually use as part of your dialogue box so let me just continue with the next set of tools so which is going to be the global replace so let's go to the global replace now this time around the global replace tool allows you to make replace to respective element and that different breakpoint or um, um that is all breakpoint as well so um, depending on what kind of replace you want to make will determine which one you would want to use either current breakpoint only or to all breakpoint and then also when you come to the structured data over here you can actually see that there's been some improvement without the uh, element or items which are over here displays as well as you can actually go ahead to specify details over here with regard to your structured um, data which is actually good for search engine optimization and then also one important feature I haven't spoken about is the ability to set different font size for respective um, breakpoints. Let me just find, figure this out. That should be under tools, options. And once you come to default breakpoint, this is where you can specify different, um, different font sizes for respective breakpoints. And once you switch to those breakpoints, uh, break it's automatically going to adopt the font sizes that you've specified over there. Now, under the icon font, this time around, we have both font or some icons as well as Google icons all merged together. So you have just one, two, and you can specify or select from which one you'd want to use, being it font or some icons or material icons, and then you get a chance to specify, select the icons you want to use. And then also the ready to use JavaScript has some few more tools added to it. As part of those tools is the SoundCloud um player which you can um now add to your project so that's it over here that you can actually use so you have the either button or you have the player and then also as part of that we also have some facebook plugins which are added being it comment like share and so on over here so in a nutshell um, version 16 has some promising features that is going to be actually cool to work with so there's a, um, a couple more features i haven't gone over yet but um i think this video is actually getting very lengthy and i should i would want to end over here what i'm going to be doing in my subsequent videos is basically working on tutorials on how to go about or use some of these tools and in case you have any tutorials or requests you can actually go ahead and then let me know about them and then i'll try my possible best to see how i can record them so thank you very much for watching and if you haven't subscribed to this channel kindly go ahead and then subscribe and that should be it for now bye for now